All right, today we'll be repairing and replacing the diaphragm on a Klipsch uh, horn, high frequency horn, uh, model K77M. Uh, the K77 is uh, very similar, uh, as is the Electro Voice uh, T35 uh, and ST350. All of these units require the same diaphragm, which is an 89486A uh, diaphragm assembly. And although many of them have different horn uh, lens sizes and configurations on the front here that you'll notice that may be different, they all have the same setup uh, on the back end for the diaphragm replacement. So we'll start with this one and we'll just set that in place here like this. You'll notice there's a wiring harness attached uh, from the Klipsch cabinet. We get to leave this in place. That does not need to be removed for this uh, diaphragm replacement. So we'll go ahead and just set that aside there. First thing to do is to remove the four Phillips head screws that are on the back of the magnet uh, plate that you can see here. And that's fairly simple. Just remove these one at a time. Like this. And we'll set these aside for reinstallation here uh, later. And um, the next thing we'd like to do is mark the uh, magnet assembly and horn lens assembly to make sure we put them back together uh, in the same location uh, that they were removed. Uh, so we'll just take a black sharpie marker and just put a little black line there and a little black line in the corresponding um, assembly for the uh, diaphragm which is the top plate here. Okay. So at this point we can remove the lens assembly. You'll see this comes off in one easy piece here. You have the lens assembly here. Uh, this piece can actually just be set aside for now and we'll put that back on when we're done with the repair. We'll set that aside and you'll notice here now we have the top plate assembly um, of the magnet structure and then the, basically the diaphragm housing here and we'll be removing uh, the solder points here and here on the left and right sides of this. I'll turn that a little bit so you can see it a little bit better uh, there and there. And what happens is uh, the solder leads are, or the leads from the diaphragm are soldered through those points and these eyelets in the terminals. So the easiest way to deal with that is to uh, take your soldering iron. We leave ours set at around uh, 700 degrees uh, for this. It is uh, kind of a hard plastic here, so we don't want to overheat the terminal and loosen it uh, in the in the material there with the, with overheating on the soldering iron. So we'll basically put a little bit of uh, a heat to that. You'll see the solder start to liquefy almost instantly, and then we'll use our solder sucker to remove uh, the old solder from the assembly. It makes the diaphragm removal much easier. So we'll do uh, that side first, then we'll come over here to the positive connection side and do the same thing at this point. All right, and the solder uh, sucker really makes uh, life a lot easier for you there. Uh, if you don't have one, you can uh, pick up a cheap one at Radio Shack typically, and it uh, really makes, makes this a lot faster for you. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to go. We see that we have our positive connection indicated with the red striping here, our negative connection with the uh, black striping here. There is a little red indicator on the top plate or diaphragm housing assembly here uh, that indicates the positive side, of course. So we'll want to just gently lift the diaphragm housing off of the top plate of the magnet. <coughs> and at this point you can see the old diaphragm assembly uh, in place here and the magnet assembly here. So we'll set the magnet assembly aside for now. And the next thing to do is to remove the round uh, gasket here which we must reuse for this. Uh, these are no longer available with the diaphragm kits. Okay, So we'll just use the tip of a sharp utility knife here to basically pry that assembly away and we'll set that aside um, for reuse uh, later as well. Now you'll see the old diaphragm assembly in here and usually these will fail by being overpowered. You'll see a separation of the um, voice coil windings in place here or a lot of times they'll fail right where the lead wires connect uh, to the voice coil in this area right along in here. At this point this diaphragm is no good so we will replace uh, the entire assembly. We'll just peel this out of here like this okay, and we'll discard the old diaphragm assembly. In many cases you'll find one of the lead wires uh, still has a little solder connecting it to the terminal eyelet, so we'll flip this over and we'll come back and uh, deal with that. <coughs> Basically we'll just warm up the soldering iron right into the eyelet area here like this just for a second or two and then that piece will pull right out. Okay, so we're ready to go here. 
uh, with that <coughs> assembly. And you'll notice on the uh, new diaphragm that we have a couple of things going on here. The first thing we want to pay attention to is um, the connection points uh, here are much longer. That gives you room to, to basically thread those through the eyelets and solder those. And then on the new diaphragm, when we remove this out of the casing here, it's a little difficult to see, but there is a lead wire that runs right along the outside. It's actually part of the voice coil. It's a voice coil wire. Right along the outside of the coil winding um, right here at this corner location. So we want to mark that with a red sharpie. Just give it a little line like that as you can see there. Okay. And what that line indicates is it indicates the placement of the diaphragm in the top plate of the magnet has a little keyhole in it here. And that matches that. Okay. That, that's how that goes in. We don't want to install it reversed like this. We want it to install properly with that wire and marking indicated to the keyhole in the top plate. Very important. All right. So we have the new assembly sitting here ready to go. Okay. We don't want to handle it by the winding itself. That's very delicate. Just handle it by the outside edges of the diaphragm and that can set in place there for just a moment. Next thing we want to do is clean the magnetic gap. Um, in this case the magnet gap looks to be you know very clean but we always want to run a piece of sticky masking tape uh, you know sticky side out around that um, magnet gap a time or two just to make sure that we pick up any dust particles that may have accumulated there over the years. So we'll just take our sticky tape, just regular painters masking tape, fold it sticky side out uh, on a business card like this and we'll set this aside here for just a second and we'll just run that through the magnet gap a couple of times to make sure that we're picking up anything in the magnet gap um, that may be there. And at this point we're ready to go with that. Magnet gap looks clean. We have our keyhole indicator here. Okay. And the next thing to do is to set up the new diaphragm installation into <coughs> Uh, our housing here and we want to take a quick double check of our markings that we did before we removed everything and you'll see we have the black kind of indicator here. Um, it's a little difficult to see but it is there and that matches with the magnet black mark indicated here that we did before we took everything apart and so that shows you that this sits in here like this. Okay, Just like that <clears throat> and that's how that must go back together. So what we want to pay attention to at this point is that the diaphragm also goes in correctly with the keyhole marking that we put here and that shows us that the diaphragm assembly must go in, I oh, had it backwards there, we'll flip it over just like this, I we'll want to double check that to make sure, there we go Okay. and what we want to do at this point is just thread lead wire through one hole and then gently through the other like so and it's not set in place yet it's just being held in at this point um, by the tension of the uh, flat lead wire that runs out through both sides okay you'll notice that if you just use kind of your fingernail edge the edge of your fingernails there to kind of press that in place that it will sit perfectly down inside the depression around the housing here and it's very important that we do that to make sure that that's sitting in there centered properly uh, otherwise we'll have damage occur to the voice coil when we reinstall the unit uh, back into the magnet plate here okay so that's what we want that's what that needs to look like and again you'll notice we have our red indicator that we installed or that we marked here that when we flip it over is going to match perfectly onto the keyhole location in the magnet plate right there okay <clears throat> so the next thing to do is to reinstall the gasket that we removed okay and that just kind of presses in place as well sometimes you'll find it's a little easier for you if you place just a little dab of adhesive it could be a modeling glue or our speaker repair adhesive um, a couple drops here and here and that helps to hold this assembly in place so that the o-ring gasket is not wanting to come apart when we flip the assembly over. 
okay so we're good there everything looks good and at this point we're ready to go ahead and reinstall the completed assembly um, carefully back down onto the magnet plate and at this point you want to just gently press down evenly around all four sides until there's no further movement here just like this okay and that's what you want now we're ready to re-solder the connection points here and here so we have our soldering iron again set to about 700 degrees so we want to come in here we'll do the positive connection side first so let the eyelet get warm let the solder flow into the joint there let the iron do the work it's best to let that warm up for a second or two first and then the solder will flow very nicely for you okay and that's what we want there so let that cool off for a moment and then we can trim the excess lead wires here use our wire snippers we'll just trim these two points here and here okay so that takes care of that part of it and at this point we're ready to put the horn lens assembly back in place and that goes on just like uh, just like we removed it just like that okay it's ready to go now at this point you want to just kind of hold everything together flip it over okay back to where we started when we removed the screws get an eye eye visual here make sure that the screw holes are lined up Put those in there's four of them are here all together just hand tighten those for now okay like this all right usually just tighten them all the way down by hand at that point we're good everything's locked back together properly and just a couple of turns corner to corner on each screw kind of snug everything in place and that's what we want okay, and then we go back and basically at this point you're just kind of seating the assembly back together pressing the parts back together once you get a nice snug fit just give each one an eighth to a quarter turn like this and we're all set this particular unit should be ready to go last thing we'll want to do is just flip it back over you can see there it's all ready to go we've got our positive and negative connections here that we did not have to remove for the repair so we'll take our signal generator leads which on this particular test we leave set to uh, 2000 at about a volt to volt and a half it doesn't take much voltage on these they're very delicate you don't want to get too much power on them okay and that's good there we'll go over to the signal generator and sweep some frequency through the unit and that is exactly what you want nice clean sound no binding of the voice coil and this unit is ready to go ready to be reinstalled back into the cabinet for the Klipsch K77M model high frequency driver